My colleague Leonie joined Continental in 2017 and took over the role of the training coordinator for the impact project within the ContiTech organization in 2020. And Leonie will present in the second half of our presentation. Thank you, Marcus. And uh, yeah, I will now um, take over and explain you a bit more about how we use TTKF for our S4HANA implementation, also called IMPACT. But before we dive deeper into the details of IMPACT and what this is about, um, I would like to quickly orientate ourselves. So Marcus already explained that we are from Robert Technologies. He's responsible for tires and I'm within ContiTech. And ContiTech actually has a very wide range of products, so a very diverse portfolio, as you can see here. And this is interesting to know, as it makes this project even more complex and complicated, as we need to consider all the different requirements. So let us have a look at IMPACT. So what does IMPACT stand for? IMPACT stands for Information Management Performed at Quantitech. And what is it about? So currently we have 12 plus different SAP and non-SAP solutions within Quantitech. And we have those um, 12 plus systems because Quantitech has grown organically, but also inorganically over the years with different mergers and acquisitions. And what we are trying to do currently is to build one global SAP S4 HANA system. And this will actually affect 16,000 end users. And why we are doing this? With IMPACT, we would like to have less manual work, faster decision making, therefore profitable growth, less IT costs, and also faster IT. And if we have only one, SAP system, we will also have a broader SAP expertise base. So as that, we would like to have less manual work because right now we spend a lot of our time with manual work. So IMPACT would like to automate processes to free up time to focus on really value adding work and like this enable profitable growth. And to achieve this, we have our vision, so our why, which is building our foundation for the future together. And as well, our mission, so our how, harmonizing processes and standardizing solutions to enable a connected, faster, leaner, and more intelligent future. And we are doing all this to then become the digital backbone of Quantitech business. So this is really our goal. But to give you a better idea of where we are within the project, I would like to quickly um, have a look at the timeline before we dive deeper into the training topics. So we actually started this project already in 2019 with a pre-study. So where we had a look, okay, where are we now? What is the current status? Um, and did some pre-definitions. And then mid of 2020, and we are still in that phase right now, we started the template phase. So in this phase, we are really developing the new system, building the new global template and realizing what we have developed. And then beginning of next year, so 2022, the rollout phase will start, which is also our longest phase. And here you can see we have divided the rollout into different waves, eight waves. And within each wave, we have a certain amount of different locations that will then go live with the new system. So this would be it to uh, orient you generally within IMPACT. So what is IMPACT about? And now I would like to go one step further and take a look at the training approach. So as that, we have 16,000 affected end users. And as you can imagine, this is quite a lot and those can't be trained centrally. Therefore, we decided to go for a train the trainer approach. Within that train the trainer approach, we have, first of all, a central key user. This central key user is within our central project team and receives a didactic training from a didactic expert. 
Then we have our local key users. These are specific people, experts within the locations that will support us within the locations. And they will receive the technical training, so a system-based training from the central key user, and also receive a didactic training from the didactic expert. Because then they will be the ones that train the end users. So this is how our train the trainer approach looks like. And then to meet all the different learning types and different situations, so different needs that you can imagine with having 16,000 different uh, end users and also covering different modules such as PP, WM, CO, you know, all of them. Um, we decided to have a blended learning approach, which means we will provide different training formats. We have decided to go for five. The first one is the classroom training. The classroom training is a training with a trainer, so either online or offline, and it is based on a PowerPoint presentation, includes a system demonstration and a lot of information, and also includes exercises. And as it is very interactive, we decided to only have eight to 10 participants to best um, yeah, fit their needs or meet their needs. Secondly, so the second format with a trainer, which is comparable to the classroom training, is the info session. This info session uh, is also based on a PowerPoint presentation, also with system demonstration, but without exercises. And as it is less interactive and also meant to be a bit shorter than the classroom training, we can have up to 35 participants. So these are the two formats with a trainer, online or offline. Let's see how COVID goes. And the, then we have three more self-learning formats. And these three self-learning formats are the ones that uh, Marcos already presented, because these are the ones that can already um, actually directly be generated via TTK app. The first one is the web-based training. You can imagine this to be an e-learning with a presentation or a mix of presentation and system recording and you can also select different modes so an interactive mode or a presentation mode and this is a self-learning format as said the second self-learning format is the documentation which is a pdf document with a table of contents with screenshots and descriptions and as said also self-learning and the third one is the editorial guide. So step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots and short descriptions. And as already presented by Marcus, especially helpful within the quick access as performance support. And all these different formats should be available or will be available on TDK app. So we will upload also the PowerPoint presentations there to make them available to all and users. So that's it for the blended learning approach. But let's have a look at how the process of the content creation really goes, because this is where we are currently within the project. First of all, let me explain the four different roles that we have defined and that you can see here on the left. We have a content creator, which is creating the materials. And in this case, it's mainly our external partner. Then we have a content owner who is a content expert and um, who is then also on the long term responsible for keeping the materials up to date. And this person is within Contitech. Then we have a quality control also within Contitech um, who checks the materials quality before we release them. And then we have the training team. So um, I'm also within the training team and we are responsible for the whole training concept. Okay, so let's come to the process. First, we started with the creation of a training curriculum all together. So what we did is we wanted to structure and plan all materials that need to be created. And to do so, we created like a template, an Excel file, and you can see it here or a screenshot from it with different learning goals 
training formats, training durations, so different columns where they should plan all the materials that need to be created. So this was the first step. Then we from the training team continued. We took the information from the training curriculum and did the prioritization of the content creation. Because we only have limited capacity within all the teams, all the substreams that are working within the project, we said we need to prioritize. And as we have the local key user training first, we would like to prioritize or we have prioritized classroom training and info sessions as we need to have them ready um, at first. Then we created placeholders. So we prepared as much as possible for the content creators to make it as easy as possible for them. We prepared PowerPoint placeholders and we also prepared placeholders within TTKF. And we shared templates to ensure a unified format and also to help the content creators and ensure quality. So this is what we did from the training team. And the next step then was to enable the content creators. And we did so by having a content creator kickoff first. Within that content creator kickoff, we uh, told them all the details about the process, so the process that I'm explaining right now. And we shared all the templates, all the uh, also best practices, and how this process will go. After that meeting, um, the, TT, uh, the content creators started a TTKF self-learning. And in parallel, they already received credentials for the TTKF test and training system. And were supposed to play around with the functionalities in the system. So they already were able to familiarize themselves with the system and then had a TTKF training with a real trainer, actually from TTS, um, to yeah, be fully enabled to start the content creation for impact. After that, the phase of planning the content creation started. So we also provided the content creators with um, an Excel sheet or so a template to plan when they will correct, create which content. So to be able to plan their capacity wisely because a lot of things are going on and maybe training is not their priority one when there are still some other processes within realization. And then the content creation starts. The content creator is creating the content and the content owner is actually giving input. So if the content creator is missing one or the other information or needs advice, then the content owner steps in. After the content creation, the material will move to the quality control for a certain quality check. Then we will have a rework if needed. And then we have a final quality check by the training team in which we have a look at the layout, the format, and so on, before we then upload or release everything on TTKF. So this is the process that we are currently using for the content creation. And although we are still within that process and we are not done yet, so really not at all, so the LKU training is still ahead of us, the end user training is still ahead of us, um, we haven't started with the rollout phase yet, but I can already share some lessons learned that I've gathered until now. So already one year now. First, be the time radar. Help people managing their time. Really, I have the feeling you need to remind people over and over again to avoid the prioritization of other topics due to capacity problems. Therefore, really ensure that you and also they are on time. Second, communication diligence. It is a very dynamic internal and external alignment as we're working with an external partner as this project is very big and as we also have a very high fluctuation, not only internally but also externally. So therefore you need to address people directly to really make sure to reach the right people. And you should also ensure that the communication is really crystal, crystal clear and you explain everything and provide enough information for everyone. 
And the third thing is make it as easy as possible. So as already said, people have a lot of other things on their mind. So you should prepare as much as possible as we did with all the planning tools, templates, placeholders, and so on. And you should also give them a clear guidance and instructions. And this also ties in with this crystal clear communication. People really need to be able to find the information they need as soon as possible. 